Hey friends, so we've learned about if statements and how to use branching to decide the order that things run in your application. We've got some basic if statements here, but we're now gonna learn about looping and then try to put the two things together because a computer is no good unless it can do the boring work more than once. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at our code here. And let's say that we were gonna take some numbers and we were gonna count up from something. So maybe we have a counter and we'll start with an integer that's called counter and we'll go from one and we'll say counter equals counter. Oops. Now this is interesting. I was typing really fast and I want to point out that that drop down pops up and I typed too fast and I hit enter and I got something I didn't want. It's trying to be super helpful. It's okay. Right? It's I just back up completion. and I'll try again. So here I can say counter equals counter plus one. That's a way. And then I could say console dot right line counter. All right, and then I suppose, David, I could go like this, right? Yep. And now I'm gonna make that number go from zero, one, two, three, four. Let's see you, if that works. You got a weird using in the code there. Five. What's that? The, the using from oh, the- Oh, and I yeah. ended up getting a weird little add on there. We'll go ahead and get yep. rid of that. Okay. So when I .NET run that, we get one, two, three, four. Ship it, as they say in the industry. Well, there's two interesting things here that can be fixed. First, Saying counter equals counter plus one is actually kind of silly because there's an operator that'll make that easier called plus plus. Make sure you, so this is interesting. The IDE is showing you a tip, right? So this is not a res squiggle, which is the, oh, you're it's doing a, a bad thing, it's wrong. This is a helpful squiggle. It is here, you can actually improve this current code by doing this thing that's more Makes more sense. Right. So instead of a squiggle that's like, you're bad, this is like, hey, this would be helpful. It's I'm going to click on quick fix and then say fix them all in the entire document. Look at that. Ooh. Ooh. See, that's why you don't use Notepad, friends. <laughs> so what we just did there is we took all of those counter equals counter plus ones. We turned them into plus pluses. This seems very repetitive, though, David. I'm not really feeling this. So how can I make this even better with a loop. So perfect. So you have the same thing over and over repeated, I think four times here. Yes, sir. Instead of that, we can choose to do a loop. Okay. Well, I've gone from zero to four. I'll start at zero. I want to go up to, let's say five, but not including five. Right. Or four, including four. Got it. Okay. So we can do a while loop. Okay. So while. While counter is less than five. Okay. And right. then you said you before, want to take the console right line, the body of that, right? Those two methods. Those I want to two, take this here. Yep, copy paste that. Okay. And always use All right. parentheses. Sorry. Oh, you want me curly, curly braces? Curly, curly braces. braces. Yeah. yeah. All right. And then I'm going to push a little tab here. That white space doesn't matter. You said it's not significant right. white space. So it's I can visually for us to well, reason it's nice. About it it yeah. looks better. I mean, I could put it like this. But you start to get a sense of what code ought to look like as you read it. Structure. That's and right. that, that little bit of structure there. And here's a little trick. You can actually hold down shift and press the up and down arrows, and you can go tab or shift tab, and you can move the entire block, the do entire you want selected tip? block. What's, what's uh, the tip you got? Let's, for do, me? let's move everything to the, to the left again. Do shift tab to the left. Okay. So you want me to mess it up? Mm -hmm. put it off Make it look all messy. Okay. And then go to the edit and then search for format document. Okay. So we're going to go to edit. Uh, I think it's actually it's not under there. Uh, you want to format the entire document, right? That's right. There's so a shortcut for this. In Visual Studio Code, they have a thing called the command palette. Command palette, you're right. And you hit control P and you say a, or control shift P will get you there quicker. Control P will give you all of the, 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 search. the, uh, the we'll search it. Control shift P. And you want to do format document. Is that right? Yep. So we hit format document. Look at that. And it fixes your code to what a typical C sharp programmer would do. I'll do it again. And look at this. What's this? Hotkeys. Hotkeys. You collect your hotkeys. Shift, Alt, F. Put them on a post it note. Put it on your monitor until you know it. So Memorize Shift, it. Alt, F. Let's try it. Shift, Alt, F. Lovely. Beautiful. Beautiful. Spacing, everything. Scrumptious. It's perfect. So, wow. Now, before we said if. Yeah. If counter is less than five, we're going to say wow. Now let's go ahead and run that and see if that works. .NET run. 
Nice. Interesting. Okay. Right. But that went up to five, to five before I went to four. Yeah. Okay. So what's going on there? So you did counter plus plus before printing. So it starts at zero. Mm -hmm. The condition is checked. While counter is less than five, zero is less than five. Yep. That's correct. So counter is zero here. It's zero is yep. less than five. Now it equals one. One. And you print one. And I print one. And I went and I print one, two, three, four, five. It went to five, goes back up here, and then it stops. It quits. So we need to move our counter plus Below. plus down one. That's right. And Shift one alt. thing to notice, the, both the if and the while statement share the same idea of a condition. That Boolean in the while statement, counter less than five, that condition, what we call it conditions, that determines if the loop should still run or not. Mm. So every time this code runs, it runs the entire loop, and then it evaluates the expression again, and it says, is it true or false? If it's true, run the while loop body, otherwise stop. Okay, that's interesting. Let's go and try this, and we'll test your theory. So that worked. So you're saying, though, it's going to do it while it's true, just like if looks for that expression to be true. Correct. What if I said while true? Then it would never end. So that's a forever. Forever. All right, let's see if that is the case. So let's see when it stops. <laughs> well, here's the thing though. When's it going to stop? Calling back to the video we did on integers. Uh, overflow. <laughs> that's going to stop when it eventually overflows, or maybe it won't. And then it will become a negative number, right? Then it will stop. You'd have to wait until it Two gets billion. big, but uh, we're not going to wait that long. How do I stop it? How do you though? stop it? Yeah. Good so question. what you do, if you get yourself in a situation like this, you can hit Control C. Control C is kind of the universal break. But if you're in the debugger, which can happen as well, I'll press F5. You can get in a situation like that as well. So it's going to start thinking. Now it's spinning. You've got this debug toolbar at the top here. Just push the big stop button yep. to get yourself out of there. Or if you're adventurous, you can hit the, uh, the pause button and you can stop exactly uh, where that's happening. And this, this is called a runaway application. I think this application is probably freaking out right now. And we've probably angered uh, the beasts. All right, so we just came out of debugging. While true is probably a mistake. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back the way it was, which was uh, while counter, oops counter less than five. Yep. All right. Now that's a while loop. Another one would be called a do while loop. You made the comment before that it says while and then it evaluates or looks at that false or true expression. Expression, there. right. Uh, but if, it, if this isn't the case, then it'll never even go in there once, will it? Yep, that's right. Okay. But what if I take that whole while part and put it at the bottom. And then here I say, do this. Wow, this other thing. We, we've been coding for a while, so we see these things and, and it looks natural. But I do think this reads like English. Do statements while this condition is true. Mm -hmm. Right? So it'll run this loop. And then while this while counter is less than five, do it again and again and again. So it actually reads like, you're, you're telling the computer to do these things, instructions, imperatively, right? One step, then one step, then one step, then one step. Right. Let's see if the result is any different. Okay. Same, right? So we got the same. It's subtle. Do the thing no matter what. If counter was 10, which is definitely bigger than 5, when you do while less than 5, it would not happen at all. Right. When you do a do while, you're going to get 10. Happens once. One time. And then it, then it checks. So to your point, it looks like English because you're used to looking at it because you've been doing this for a long time. We want you all who are doing this as well to do it enough times that it starts becoming familiar. Like any new language that you're learning, it's going to feel right in your mouth. It's going to feel right on the screen. And you're going to say, yeah, that makes sense to it's me. It's perfect. It's perfect. All right, we're going to take a break and we'll come back and we'll look at four loops.